API is an acronym for Application Programming Interface, which is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. So every time you use an app like Instagram, you send in us a message, or check travel prices for your next vacation, you're using the API. APIs can make or break applications and often require additional infrastructure to secure, scale, and accelerate. And this is the case now more than ever as organizations are modernizing their large, legacy monolithic applications into smaller individual microservices. These microservices are loosely coupled in order to make your apps more scalable, highly available, and resource efficient, just to name a few. However, the outcome of using a microservice oriented architecture comes with many more API calls going between your clients and your microservices. So how do you securely manage this influx of API traffic for a distributed system? Well, with an API gateway. Hell, I even purchased this nifty Schmedium t-shirt with an API gateway. And the first lucky viewer who answers my API gateway question towards the end of this video in the comments section won their own version of this t-shirt. So now let's take a deeper look into how an API gateway can both improve the user and developer experience for an online store. So let's start off an example here. Let's say we have a fictitious e-commerce storefront, Indies Custom Threads. And in this store, you can order customized t-shirts, kind of like my nifty API gateway t-shirt here. So let's walk through this scenario, right? We'd have our users here, and then they would make the purchase and look at the t-shirts on the website through these different clients, right? So you'd have your web application here, which would be a standard web browser. Uh, we'd have our mobile client as well. It could be iOS, it could be Android. And then we also have a third party API integration service, right? So this could be if you want to integrate your website with like say something like Facebook, or in our case, we have a review API that's integrated through a third party. So say you see someone makes a comment about the t-shirt and they're like, man, the t-shirt fit comfortable, but the 50% polyester really gave me a bad skin rash. That would all be possible through this third party integrated service. So now that we established our users and our clients, now let's take a look at the actual product detail UI, right? So there's a lot of different functionality, a lot of different tasks that we've broken down into these microservices here. And this originally would be a monolithic application like we previously talked about, but we've, we've broken it apart and segmented it into different services. So as you can see, the first one here is the product info service. This would be stuff like, you know, Look at the t-shirt, what kind of color is the t-shirt? Is it black, red? The size of the t-shirt, large, medium, and so on. And then we have our pricing service. We have our order service. If you want to look at purchase history, you got the inventory service and the review service and so on. And this is just a handful of different microservices here. We could have many more. So that's just a very quick rudimentary overview of direct client to microservice communication architecture. So let's take a look at what an API gateway architecture might look like. Let's get rid of these. Okay, so API gateway, the topic of the hour. So your API gateway would reside right here in the middle between your clients and your microservices. And there are numerous benefits with implementing an API gateway solution. But I'm just going to go over just a couple main ones right now. So the first main benefit is client performance. I'm just going to put perf for short. So in our last example, we had our client making a bunch of API requests to each individual microservice. So in this instance, with our API gateway, which would essentially be like a reverse proxy, or you could even consider it like an API traffic controller, you would take those requests and then route them to the appropriate microservice. So this has numerous benefits, right? Because now, instead of having all those individual requests go in each microservice, now you can filter it through your API gateway. And this reduces latency. So now your product detail UI page will run much more efficient, much faster, and it's a better client experience um, because you don't have as many round trips, right? Because in our last example, say you had a request come in, it went to the product info service, but you, your pricing microservice needs to speak with the product one, so you would have to go back to the client, back to the pricing, and so on. So 
this reduces those round trips here. And on top of just being a better you know, client performance, it also helps the development team as well because they don't have to manage and maintain all those individual API requests. Now they can do this all through the API gateway. So the next main benefit is security. So by having this API gateway right here, we essentially have a security barrier in front of our uh, front-end clients, right? Our front-end API endpoints because otherwise we had everything wide open, right? And you're not susceptible to like a DOS, denial of service attack or any other malicious attack with this API gateway. And you could add other services within this API gateway like authentication, authorization, to add another layer of security. And this leads me to my next benefit, which is protocol translation. So if you recall, um, we had to have the same internet friendly protocol going from our clients to the microservice in order for it to function and operate. Here we could say we have HTTPS, that's again a secure credential, but we can change the protocol here. We could just go HTTP for each API request that's routed and by removing the S and that secure credential where you don't have to authenticate, this is SSL termination, where the SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. And this is a process where you decrypt and offload the encrypted SSL data within the API gateway instead of going to our backend microservices. So by doing this, this greatly helps the performance of our e-commerce storefront, as you can see. Although I don't know why we don't have any more Spreniums. You don't even have to have, you know, internet friendly. You can even have server side protocols like AMQP. So you have a larger reach, right? You have more usability with your e-commerce storefront because you could have other protocols. And the last quick benefit I want to mention is common functionality, defunct offload. So we're offloading these common functionalities for every microservice that we had to have in order for it to operate, right? So now we can take some of that business logic and put it in this API gateway. You can just have your microservice running a little bit more efficiently and smoother because they're just focused on their tasks that they really need to focus on. They don't need all that other business logic. So you could have stuff like rate limiting. You could have 10 requests per every 60 seconds if you want to put a cap on that to help with demand. You could also have stuff like API monitoring and logging if you want to keep it on the API health and how everything's working operational wise. And there's just so much more. I and mean, that's just a few. There's a lot more standard features typically with an API gateway solution. So this is great and all, but what if we get an instance where, say, you get a huge spike in traffic and Indy's custom thread is preparing for Black Friday. Oh my God, we're gonna get so much traffic. What are we gonna do? You got users here, you got users here. Well, we could install and implement a BFF architecture. And no, I'm not saying best friend forever, although I will be your best friend if you like this video. I'm talking about back end to front end. And essentially what this is, is you're adding additional API gateways. So for this one, for instance, this would be our dedicated web API gateway. So here, we could have one for our mobile devices, right? You could have another API gateway. And this would just be dedicated to your you know, native OS and Android devices. And it would take all that API traffic coming from those devices and route them to the right microservices. And this is, you know, you could have this for the third party integration service as well. And there's other clients as well you could have here. You could have like IoT devices with sensors, right? Um, so this is a great benefit if you're gonna have a huge demand and spike of traffic, or say you're just adding a lot more functionality and features to your, your e-commerce storefront. So this would be a great architecture to consider to expand and scale up. So this is just a very quick overview of API Gateway. I hope you found it helpful. Oh, and before I forget, I didn't forget the t-shirt if you want to get it. My question to you is, what is SSL termination? 
drop an answer in the comment section and then we'll make sure to ship you the t-shirt and we'll get your details through there. So thank you so much for watching again. I hope this high-level overview has been helpful. Thank you. If you have questions, please drop us a line below. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. And don't forget, you can grow your skills and earn a badge with IBM Cloud Labs, which are free browser-based interactive Kubernetes labs.